Almost everybody ends up doing this wrong. So today we're gonna to talk about how to design side loops on 3D printed parts. Now the challenge with side loops is that very often they're just a brittle part. They're a component that can be pulled out very easily because you have layers that do not have a lot of support around the outer side and you're not able to make them very thick in order to get what you want out of them. A lot of people end up designing kind of these wiry sort of side loops, which again, just don't have a lot of material. If somebody puts a lot of force on that, they're gonna snap off. Heck, if they get dropped, they could potentially snap off depending on what your material is. Now, while these can be reinforced by picking good materials, it's better to just do the CAD correctly in order to create something that is reliable. So the very first and simplest way of doing this is actually not to do like a full loop, but just have a hole and a plate basically on the side. You can make it elliptical or perfectly round. Make the side loop plate as large as you possibly can to give it as much meat as you possibly can. And then just to punch a hole right through. That could be for your zip tie, for your cord, whatever it happens to be. This is a good, simple way of modeling it up and it gives you the material that you need to make sure that this thing is reliable. But there is still the potential for pullout. So if we wanted to reinforce that a little bit more, you can take it kind of a step further. And the way I like to do this is actually to put a rib on the outside of the plate. This way, this rib can act as a reinforcing actor. It can go all the way from the base of the side loop to the very top, or you can actually design it to be kind of like a little T flange on the outer edge, where it's just adding material right at that pull out stress concentration without having any issues. Throughout all of this, of course, make sure there are no vertical overhangs so you don't have support. Make sure everything is angled so that every part can grow on the part previous to it. And then just make sure you fill it everything. Please make sure you fill it everything. And of course, the very simplest solution of fixing all of this is to just make these side planes really, really thick and fat. You can have them loop the entire part or whatever it happens to be in order to make sure that they're reinforced and strong. But ultimately what you're trying to do is you're trying to add more material, more reinforcement around the pullout area in order to make sure that it's strong and reliable. Do not just leave a simple plane of vertical layers on the outside that's gonna be thin and is gonna be delicate. This way you can make a part that's really robust, can last as long as you need it to, and can actually replace a traditionally manufactured part very reliably without any issues. Because these features that we just discussed are not typical inside of normal design. A lot of these could not be molded or produced with traditional sort of methodologies. But 3D printing enables them now, and it also necessitates them in order to have a reliable part. So if you wanna mass produce a part in quantities of thousands, like what we do here at Slant3D, make sure you're using these reinforcement strategies. Have a great day, everybody.